Hi, it's Sandra here from Creating Spain, and today I want to talk about distress inks, or should I say, the lack of them. Now, where I live, it isn't easy to get supplies, and to be honest, I have an awful lot of other ways of colouring things without buying distress inks. Notice I've got a load of markers back here, I've got oil paints, acrylic paints, I have watercolour paints, I have watercolour inks, um, I've got normal pens, I have so many different ways of adding colour to things that to be honest I couldn't justify buying a load of distress inks even if I wanted to. So it got me thinking what are the qualities of a distress ink? Well it's blendable, that's one of the qualities but you can also lift colour off of a distress ink with water, so it has to be water-based. It can't really be anything much else. It must have a water element in there. Obviously, it has a colour element. So I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if you can actually just use water colours. And the answer is, no, you can't. But there is a way around this. Now, I had a really good experimental session yesterday, not yesterday, this morning. And I found that there was a problem. If you just use straightforward dilute watercolour and you try and sponge it or whatever onto a paper, uh, be it with something like this, which is just... Um, a cotton wool pad or be it with a sponge or anything else like that you end up with a big problem the paper pills because you're rubbing you've got water on it and you're rubbing it and the paper pills and it's a mess it's not clever it's not nice it doesn't look good so I was thinking well okay there's got to be a way around this somehow hasn't there and there is definitely a way around this Okay, first off, I have a set of watercolours, just a normal palette, Winsor & Newton happens to be, and I have got them wet here. Now, I've also got a cup of water, and I've got a piece of glass, this is just a glass coaster, and I know it's not very handy for seeing colours because it's got these spots on it, but it helps me to see it on the desk. I'm forever losing pieces of glass on my desk. Um, and I have my old friend glycerin. I think if ever there was something which is underutilized, perhaps underrecognized, definitely it's glycerin because I find so many uses for this stuff. It's amazing. Anyway, I have a brush. This just happens to be a water brush, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm going to show you how to use this. If your paints are dry, dip it in water and get a nice amount of paint on your brush and just put it onto a piece of glass or any other slick surface come to that. It doesn't make any difference. I've used glass because it's convenient for me. Take the bottle of glycerin and add just a drop, oops, that's quite a large drop, of glycerin to the paint. Clean your palette now with your sponge or your wipe or whatever it is that you're using. I'm going to have to do this slightly out of camera, sorry. Um, literally just rub it over the surface of your paper. Now this particular one is watercolour paper but it doesn't necessarily have to be. I don't know if you can see the colour because I'm using a pale mauve and it's bright daylight outside so I'm not sure if you can actually see the colour on that. But it's given a beautifully even coat of colour. Now to make it stand out quite considerably I'm going to use, I think it's black by the looks of things. Yeah that looks like black for my next colour, just to make the contrast quite evident. Clean off my brush a bit. Again, one drop of glycerin. I'm not even going to bother turning my cloth over. I'm just going to mop it up with that. And I'm going to go from the other side, working towards the middle as it happens. There we go. 
don't know if you can see it, but I have a perfectly even blend. It's not a problem at all. So there we go. Great for doing backgrounds. If you don't want to bother with liquid masking, you can get away with a paper mask doing that method. And it provides the same result as far as I can see as distress inks do. Now, the other thing that I need to show you, because this is something that a lot of people are doing with their distress inks, is dropping drops of water onto it. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Right, okay, got plenty of drops of water there. Just gonna let it sit for a second while I get a piece of tissue. And I'm just going to blot it. Now it doesn't show up too clearly on the lilac, but on the black you can certainly see that my large water drops have indeed been blotted and the colour is coming out of the surface. So as far as I'm concerned, that is a win-win. I don't have to buy any extra supplies. I don't have to buy any applicators or anything like that. That can go straight in then. And I've got the result that I would want to have. Now, the other thing that you can do, if you don't want to buy blenders, but you don't want to throw away cotton pads all the time, if you've got someone who's got a cotton reel around, just wrap a piece of felt around it and use an elastic band to secure it. When you've done that, and you've finished using it, you can unwrap it, take off the felt, wash it under the tap, and you can reuse it if you want to. So there we go, DIY Distress Ink. Um, you can also experiment with other inks that you have. For example, I have some, let me my chair here. I have some Memento um, pads. Now these are um, fade resistant dye inks. But if you press that onto your surface and again add some glycerin, you can use those just as easily. You can also use some other embossing inks. I have for example, I have this one which I got in a set which included a heat gun. So I know that this is actually an embossing ink. And that one, again, tapped onto a glass surface, pick up the color with something else and rub it over your paper. And that works as well. Depending on the color, on the type of ink it is, it may or may not release the color if you splash it with water. For that, you just need to try it out and see whether it does or not. Um, but as far as the watercolour and glycerin goes, that works and it works extremely well. So I'm extremely happy with that. I don't need to buy any distress inks to do those effects. Saving me money so that I can spend it on other things that I can't do um, by alternative methods. And there's always something that I want graph-wise. OK, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.